what's going on everybody, Super Saiyan Paul here back at it again. Today we're going to be talking about more about Dragon Ball Super Episode 129, as well as what's happened previously in the series, as well as what's going to be happening in Dragon Ball Super Episode 130, and the series finale of Dragon Ball Super Episode 131. If you guys do not want to be spoiled as to what's going to happen, make sure you guys click off the video right now. This is your spoiler alert warning. Make sure you guys click off the video now. If you guys are going to be sticking around, make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe, as well as turn on notifications to be alerted anytime we have more Dragon Ball Super discussions, as well as reviews, informations, and also upcoming events with the movies and such as that. Anyway guys, Dragon Ball Super Episode 1 to 29 just aired last night and it's in the history books, but what we've seen here is that they've been hiding Frieza for the past couple of episodes. We did not see Frieza show up in any of the summaries, any of the titles, and not even for a frame on Dragon Ball Super Episode 1 to 28 and 29. Uh, 129. Um, What's interesting about this is that, remember, earlier on, Frieza did jump in and attack Jiren, and he was just completely useless against the fight. In Golden Frieza form, he had nothing to do against Jiren. He had no purpose to serve at that point in time. However, what we noticed in Episode 1 to 29, it basically confirmed for us 100% that the guy is still in the ring. They did not show him in the stands. He's not in the stands, Zeno never pushed a button, and what's interesting here is that for the fact of the matter is that the ring is just in Swiss cheese right now, it's been destroyed left, right, and center. Where is he on that slice of the ring that's left? Because while Jiren and Goku are fighting it out, and these two are fully focused on one another, everyone's focused on these two, Frieza's still hiding in this ring, Android 17 is dead, Vegeta was ringed out, with Frieza still being in there, it basically leaves the entire thing up to Frieza at the very end here. Here's why. If Frieza has nothing to do with the series, why are they hiding him? Why are they? Why did they hype him up since the beginning? And why do they keep the theme of betrayal in our heads? Ever since Goku fought Jiren for the first time, Frieza was right there the second Goku was down to heal him. They could always flip the script, the script with that and also make him betray him at the very end because if he was that worn out after not even using Ultra Instinct at its fullest and mastered Ultra Instinct, and Ultra Instinct Omen put him into like a, a like a very paralyzed state or if anything, drained completely, imagine how these both both these warriors are going to be at the very end. If anything, Goku and Jiren are going to have a stalemate at the very best case scenario for Jiren and then Frieza is going to have to be the deciding factor after they've been worn out because Jiren can be worn out it's been stated after Ultra Instinct after that first fight attacked Jiren it wore him out a bit and you could tell his power level dropped with that being the case Mastered Ultra Instinct in its fully powered state should be able to drain him enough, I think, to very least where Frieza should be able to land an attack. Mind you, Vegeta was landing landed a punch or two on Jiren, so did Android 17, I believe. So, with those two things in mind, while they caught him off guard or while he's vulnerable to stealth attacks, both of those things in mind, Frieza can be able to match those things in some way, shape, or form. However, there are multiple ways Frieza can win this tournament for Universe 7. One is just by sheer elimination. Goku and Jiren eliminate each other at the same time. Similar to what Goku and Pycon did during the other world tournament where they end up stepping out of the ring or they both drained each other or they both just knock each other out with the force of a one attack and Frieza wins by default just like coming out of the rubble and he's like hey I'm alive I'm in here he could be unconscious and one of the things that they mentioned in the very beginning of the tournament if you guys remember I stressed this all the time when the tournament first started in the first few videos I made if you're unconscious and you're in the ring the Grand Priest himself said even if you're unconscious as long as you have not been ringed out you guys will win the tournament so Frieza could actually be unconscious right now in the corner there and he could potentially win the tournament after these two ring each other out that could be one scenario which probably makes the most sense because Frieza jumping in and grabbing the wish doesn't make too much sense because with the way they've set things up they don't want anybody to really get a devastating wish to a cliffhanger because with the movie coming out that should be the cliffhanger this is a series ender and they can they can't have open-ended series enders you have to just have it end off in a good happy note which is most likely Goku getting the wish universe 7 surviving either they revive every universe or they revive just universe Universe 6, but episode 131 spoiler for the title is that Goku farewell until we meet again. That's either one of the three people for the most part. I see saying this, Whis, Beerus, or Jiren. And I would I would rather see it being Jiren because Jiren would have much more to do with the future of the series with his power level and stuff like that. But remember, guys, these guys are just mortals and they've become so strong to the point where they're challenging gods, they're above gods. I think Goku at this point is stronger than Beerus by himself. It used to be in the conversation that Vegito Blue would have to be the one to take down Beerus, but Goku by himself, especially with the way Beerus was talking about him, seemed as though Goku could defeat him if he wanted to. With, with the power 
of Mastered UI. It's, it's really interesting to see how powerful this is and after they beat the gods they've dug themselves into a corner here with what they're written here that they have to finish it off. What more is there after gods? The scaling is just out of proportion here. I mean after you beat the gods who's left? Zeno? You're gonna pick on Zeno? It doesn't make sense. So for that matter it's like what are they gonna do here to finish this off and with these two beings being this powerful for Frieza just to jump in would that take away from the fight that they're about to have because Dragon Ball Super episode 130 is being hyped up as a fight episode and it should be because they're finally gonna show us the full potential of Mastered Ultra Instinct and Jiren at 100% hashtag shirtless Jiren hashtag rub nipples for Jiren anyway Everyone's super hyped about that because Jiren finally unleashing his full power and actually taking this fight seriously is what we've been waiting for so long and it's kind of out of character for him because he's just been the strong silent type who's been in the background the entire time who we've barely known anything about and he's actually less of a fleshed out character than Ribrian, Frieza and all these other guys. It's interesting. Now what's cool about this part is that Frieza still being the character that he is since he was much more fleshed out and we know about him, we can still guess what his wish would potentially be, we can guess what Goku's wish would be, but we can't guess what Jiren's wish is here. And for them, if they didn't reveal that Dragon Ball Super was ending in episode 131, it would have been so much more interesting to see with this episode because we wouldn't know out of the three, it wouldn't be definitive that Universe 7 was going to win, it could still go to Jiren's hands, but for the most part, it's basically confirmed that Universe 7 is going to win, especially with all the marketing around Mastered Ultra Instinct. The best Jiren could hope for, like I said before, is a stalemate. And I want to see how he matches up against Goku because Goku looks like he's in complete control. Goku doesn't look like he's going to lose at all. And even all the gods are standing up and like watching this like, dude, how do you fight this? How does he keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger? Goku is literally the Superman of Dragon Ball Z right now and he's just getting endlessly powerful. But it's gonna have to be capped somewhere because Goku can't just surpass Zeno just like that. When's he gonna become the Omni King? Is Goku gonna become the Omni King really? So with these things in mind, they have to end the series here. Frieza can't get his wish just like that. He's gonna have to play some part in the finale where he either gets the final devastating attack by, via stealth attack coming out of nowhere or getting enough energy and attacking Jiren in one foul swoop where it competes with his drained state. Jiren's gonna be drained, Frieza should be able to attack him or stealth attack or they just win from process of elimination where Frieza is still in the ring while these two are duking it out and end up ringing one another out and something of that nature. If anything, they could both end up drained on the floor. Frieza rings out at least Jiren and maybe becomes a good guy in some sense. I don't know if he's going to purposely become a good guy because that could still happen. He could decide to just help Goku right here and now and be like, you know what? You've earned a bit of respect or his character could have changed. If anything, this is the biggest building block for Frieza as a character because after everything that's happened in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, this could be one of the turning sp turning spots or turning stones in his, his entire storyline. Like literally, this guy was a racist. He was literally the Hitler among Saiyans and now he's about to change it all up in this moment if he does end up being the one to save the entire Universe 7. Like he literally just saved the universe that he used to be the tyr tyr tyrannical leader of and it's really cool to see that. That adds so much more character to Frieza versus Jiren. I think character development wise, Frieza's gonna get more character development than Jiren ever did in this tournament if he ends up doing a lot of, even if he does the simplest things in the next episode and just doesn't take the wish. If he does not take that wish and uses it for bad purposes, it should be good. But the way that happy go, go lucky title is in the very end, uh, farewell until we meet again Goku, it's, it just seems like it's way too happy-go-lucky. It has that Dragon Ball GT vibe of Goku just saying farewell, the story's wrapped up, and it doesn't seem as though there's any nearby threats. Like, if, they, if either Jiren or Frieza got that wish, it would have been much, much more... It would have been much more interesting to see because Jiren, we don't know what his wish is at this point in time and we would have seen more things elaborated on that, which they would need another episode or two to show us what exactly he was going to do with it. If he was going to be the good guy and revive everybody or something of those natures, I don't know if he was going to do that, it doesn't seem like his character, we barely know his character, but Frieza, Frieza getting that wish would have probably launched an entire new series, but that series ending title, if they did not make it seem like it was so happy-go-lucky, it would have been an open ending, open cliffhanger type of ending, but I don't see that happening they have to close the chapter right here because they're going to conflict with z and on top of that with that being the case their power scalings are just out of whack i don't know where the next series is going to go because there has to be another one dragon ball super is just way too popular dragon ball as a brand is way too popular to end it right now but 
the power scaling. Who else is left? The gods are, he's almost rivaling the gods and literally in the time span of one minute, he just jumped into this new form where he's just that powerful. In 40 minutes, he, he mastered all of this energy and the Grand Priest, we know he's in top five fighters, but after that, I mean, he's gonna reach there eventually if, the, if this pacing, not too soon, any, any, like, I mean, it's not gonna be that far off and it's like, yo, how much more can Goku do? How much further can he take this? Where are they gonna take the storyline after this? Because with all of the scalings and stuff like that, they're gonna have to override something or do or some type of retcon in terms of what they're gonna be doing with the story. So Frieza, he has a chance to win. Frieza has a chance to become a good guy. Frieza also has a chance to do a stealth attack on Jiren. And Jiren and Goku may just drain each other of energy. Jiren and Goku may have a stalemate, or Goku may just completely overpower Jiren, which most likely looks like the case because Jiren's on defense, but they have to be keeping Frieza in the ring for a reason. Frieza is being hidden for a reason, and I want you guys to tell me in the comment section below what do you guys think is going to happen in the final episode because Frieza is really, really being... He's being kept to undercovers. It's weird. And for them to be doing this and hiding a character this drastically, it doesn't make too much sense for them not to utilize him in that final episode. And to have this much attention on everybody else, it just makes... It comes to question, why are you guys doing this? And if it's going to be a, a series ender, what is this possibly going to amount to with Frieza's character and what is going to happen? So, thank you guys so much for watching. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Check out my hoodies in the description. I'll be seeing you guys then. Take care. Peace.